Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I am basically going to be doing a one year recap on my Funko collection. Um, and it's going to be sort of just a stream of consciousness video of me talking about, I mean, my collecting experience the past year, um, how I started, what it's led to, all while putting on pop protectors. I recently got these protectors. They're like stuck in here. Oh, I'll lift this box up right here. I got it off Amazon for like not too expensive, so yeah. And I already put some on pop. I have some pops in my bedroom. I have some of the like Alien Remix. And um, yeah, I, I have basically none of these have pop protectors on them and we're planning on moving in the next like one to two months. And so to prepare for that, I figured it'd be a good idea to put pop protectors on them. Um, cause I also want to start like packing the collection up in preparation for the move. Um, I just think that'd be a good idea. And I figured it'd be fun to just like sit here, put these pop protectors on and talk about my collecting experience and, um, sort of have a visual of what a year's collecting has looks like for me specifically. Um, obviously it's going to look different for everyone, depending on their buying habits and tendencies, etc. But this is what my collection looks like. <laughs> um, I should have got my iPad, but I don't have it with me. But it'd be fun to go through the Funko app and go through the specs of like how many pops I have and stuff like that. But I will say, I don't know if everyone does this on the Funko app. You can sort of just like include things that aren't pops in your collection as well. So I have some like mystery minis and like random things like that. I also did get the box of fun and I took this pop out and put it in my bedroom because I thought it looked really cool and I want to display it. But I don't really want to put a pop protector on this right now because it's like, it's an empty box. So once the pop goes back in the box, then I'll put a protector on it. But I mean, well, let's talk about the box of fun. I didn't get picked for the lottery, but I did get picked for this. And this box came in relatively okay condition, but like, I don't know. My shit, my things weren't in the best condition. It was kind of annoying. What do I got over here? Oh shoot, I already put these in some protectors. Um, I just got these in recently. So yeah, move those aside. Here is my Marriott and Becker, but like you can maybe see, I don't know, the lights are so bright, but like right here on the box, yeah, right there, there's just like scuffing on it. And like the box wasn't like dented or crushed, but it looks like this just got thrown around. Like there's some bent, uh, bed marks increasing like on some of the cutouts right here I don't know I wasn't like that impressed with the quality of like the packaging which is annoying but I know it's like non-refundable so and no replacements I put Torchy in here and actually kept mine in pretty good condition I know a lot of people had a hard time opening this but Torchy's in there I don't take it out and I don't really care about putting a protector on that for now Ooh. I also keep other things. This is like my collectible corner of the house. So I also have like random pins over here. I mean, I also collect Disney pins. Like I recently got this one in. I thought it was so cool. It's like a camp scene. These lights are so bright, I'm so sorry. But I wanna frame this one. But I also have a lot of pins as well. I'm not so, I mean, we'll talk about that. I don't only collect Funko Pops. Before I got into Pops, I was, I was and still am like a big Disney pin collector. Here's a random Hawks fig pin. Um, I got that for a video that has not happened, but probably still will happen one day. One day, you know, who knows? Um, I have, like, multiple boxes, like, in here. It's just, like, pins. There's a lot of, like, fantasy pins. These are some Mambo Bot pins. I have some Escape Infinity pins. I know this isn't what the video is supposed to be about, but I'm just, like, um, yeah. I have a lot of things. One day I'll go through these pin boxes and figure out what I want to do with these pins. Oh my god, no, this doesn't want to shut. But I'm going to try to clear some of this stuff so I can make space for organizing these pops. The second box of pins. I also love Mambo Bot, so I have a lot of Mambo Bot pins. Sorry if I'm out of frame, I'm like organizing. Okay. I mean, I should, we'll preview this box. What's in this box? Oh my god. Tons of pins. Anime pins, other pins. Yeah, no, we don't have time for that today. Third box. This one's actually kind of light. I feel like I've, I've recently started selling a lot of pins, so I moved a lot out. These are actually mostly official Disney pins in there. 
Maybe that's why it's the lightest. I don't usually buy official pins as of late. I've been buying a lot of fantasy pins. But yeah, I guess it's okay to talk about pins, give some context on the collecting. Um, before I really got into Funko Pops, I was a big pin collector. Um, I even dabbled before that into like Disney dolls. I actually have Anna and Elsa right above my shelf. Let me put my camera back. You can kind of see them hidden up there. Um, but yeah, I've always loved collecting. I feel like I've been hardcore collecting for the past like three years, maybe two or three years. Um, and Funko Pops has not been swell. <laughs> I already feel like this video doesn't need to be forever. It's already five minutes in and I've like barely done anything. <laughs> I haven't even put one protector on. Okay, let's go down the line. I want to start on the bottom shelf. Oh, we have Emily. I just got this one in because I have Victor. So in this corner over here tends to be like my like not Disney collection. Um, actually the black light pops are there because I ran out of space on the shelves. But let's just start putting protectors on and I'll start talking talking about my collecting. So what got me into Funko Pop collecting was, the reason I'm doing this is because it really is like a year. It's a little over a year, but it was the San Diego Comic-Con like virtual pops of last year. Also for some context, when I put these, make these protectors, I usually take like a, I don't know what to call this, like a soft cloth. Usually use it to clean like phone screens or like jewelry and stuff like that. And I, to kind of help form the rectangularness, I'll bend the crease, but I like to use this so I don't touch the plastic from inside, so I don't get fingerprints. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah. Um, but anyways, it was like a year ago. It was virtual San Diego Comic-Con. And <clears throat> I was kind of sad because of the pandemic and that Comic-Con wasn't happening. And I've been going to Comic-Con since like 2012, 2011, like for a really long time. Even, I just moved to San Diego recently, but I'm originally from Orange County. My dad's a huge nerd. I love this part where you like, oh, tear this plastic off. But my dad's a huge nerd, so I've always been into pop culture and superheroes and video games and all that junk. Um, so we've been going to Comic-Con for a long time, but I've never been going to Comic-Con and also been collecting Funko. Like I've, I've always known Funko's crazy. Like at the convention, it's always insanity. And I've, I've known that, but at the time I didn't collect Funko. Um, and so, because Comic-Con wasn't happening last year, oh my god, I need to clean these pops because there's like one speck of something there and it's going to bug me. But whatever, we'll move on. Um, yeah, I was missing out on it and I was like, these look cool. Let me get like a souvenir to reminisce on the con that never was, which turned out to be two conventions because this year there also hasn't been a convention. Um, and let me just kind of like get like a souvenir because like that's the fun thing about going to conventions is like the hall and coming back with all of your merch and not getting to be able to do that was sad. And I collect Disney, like Disney pins. So I follow a lot of like Disney news accounts. And so I, I always see like Disney Funko news, which led me to like wanting to try to get some of the pops. Basically, I ended up getting on the online virtual convention, whatever drop the Yzma Kitty and the Alien Remix Kevin Pop. And this is Powerline. And when I got them in, they were both con stickers, which was really cool. Like I didn't really, I wasn't a collector at the time, but then like once I got it in, I was like, ooh, this is kind of rare. You know what I mean? And I like learned more about it. And I mean, the con stickers were cool because the San Diego Comic-Con ones of last year, like actually said like SCCC, like it was really cool. And it just reminded me so much of Comic-Con and I kind of itched a scratch for collecting of mine that led me down this Funko rabbit hole, which led me to here and this whole mess. <laughs> um, yeah. And it wasn't right away that I started wanting to collect. It was maybe like two to three weeks after I got the pops in and I had them. I was like, I want to collect, but how do I want to go about this? Because there's so many Funko pops, so many brands, so many franchises, etc. Um, I'm gonna move this, just this more like random box of fun crap. Um, I'm gonna sit, I'm like on my knees and it hurts. <laughs> I just wanna be like a floating head, but it's fine. Um, but there's just like so many franchises, so many brands, it's like, what do you collect? So I basically, oh shit, I'm not gonna down soda cans. I basically took like the Yzma Kitty as a starting point and the Kevin Alien Remix as a, star as a starting point. And I finished collecting the Alien Remix series and that series is displayed in my room currently. Um, and then with Yzma Kitty, I was like, well, I love Disney, but like, there's just too many. So let me just collect Disney animal pops and just not do the humans. 
because I think pups as like humans already kind of look a little awkward, like not the best. So if I only collect the animals, it'll be a lot easier and I think they're cool. And I've always sort of neglected Disney animals and other aspects of my collecting, like when I collect pins. I never usually collect animal characters. I usually always collect human characters. So I don't know. It was a cool way for me to like collect Funko, collect Disney and approach it from a different angle than I have approached collecting for other Disney collectibles. Sorry, I'm trying to stay focused while I put these in. And yeah, it has led me here. And I feel like for me, everyone collects differently, but I, from Disney pin collecting, I've always taken the sort of angle of like being as niche and specific with your collections as possible. Um, and coming into Funko Pops, like I came at it with that perspective because for example, when I got into pin collecting, it's really fun, but it's like, you want to collect everything. You want them all. You want to buy every single pin, every single pin release. doesn't matter what it is, what, what movie, what character, whatever it is. You just, you just want it. Cause it's, you, it's just part of collecting but it's unsustainable and not realistic and it never <laughs> ends well. So I already experienced that and learned that with collecting Disney pins. So coming into Funko Pops already had that, like, I guess, wisdom that let me start right off the bat, like really specific. And I really think that's helped me out. And yeah, you just kind of, you kind of FOMO with things. Like I like a lot of things. I watch all the MCU films and I watch all the new Disney plus shows but I'm definitely not gonna get into collecting Marvel. And like, do I still buy some Marvel things? Yeah, like I, I bought two WandaVision Pops, I put them out of box and display them because I like the, the show. But do I need to like be a completionist and get everything and get every chase and get everything? Like, no, mm -mm, not happening. And so that's sort of what this corner, <laughs> ooh, that's sort of what this corner has become, which is, I mean, once I start putting protectors on there if we get there that far i'll show you guys but that's basically what that corner is is, is is like things that don't fit in my collection but for whatever reason that i still wanted to get or that i thought i, I should still have essentially um there's mr toad i love this one um i'm trying to think of ones that are like are standouts for me like danny phantom from i think last year's nycc i got some chase pops i have a flocked care bear pop um, I have a Boba Fett pop right there, some Evan Ang from the recent Funko drop. Um, Danny Phantom is literally all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna scream. Oh my god. Oh, I think he's in a protector. Oh my god. Yeah, he's gotta get a protector. <laughs> Stat! Um, actually, talking about my year in collecting, one of my regrets is... <laughs> huh. <laughs> when I went to go get Danny Phantom, I went to Target the morning of took Isaiah took my boyfriend and made him come with me because I don't want to, I don't have to go alone even though he doesn't collect and you know waited right before they opened I maybe got there like 10 minutes before they opened so not too long maybe even like five minutes not even that long but um here's Dum Dumbo from that uh recent Disneyland 65th anniversary collection um yeah made him come with me we go, there's what, like six Danny Phantoms and we're like third, I want to say third or fourth in line. So, and it's one per person and like there were still more people behind me, like, I don't know, four or five people. So not everyone is going to get to pop and you know, it's the name of the game. You got to get there early or you snooze you lose kind of deal. But I knew he was going to be hyped. I already knew going into it that he was a hyped pop and that he was going to be popular. But I only got one. I just took my one and then I just told him, nah, don't get it. Like I told him like, we don't need a second. Um, you know, kind of like let someone else get it, which I actually think is really respectable. But <laughs> it is a moment that I look back on and it was like, I kind of wish I, I, took, I got a second one because it'd just be a good pop to have for trade. Um, and I don't really do that often because another thing with Funkos that I don't do is I have yet to like trade Funko Pops. With Disney pins, I've like traded before in the past, but I've never traded Funko Pops just because I feel like the community is a little more intimidating for me personally. Like, I don't know. I just feel like people are really like a lot more particular about like box condition and creases and shipping condition. And like, not that I wouldn't take those things into account, but I just want to deal with the stress of like interacting with others. And then like the, I don't know, like saying that like I didn't disclose 
something correctly or there's like a scratch here that I didn't disclose or shipping wasn't perfect or whatever. Like, I just feel like <laughs> it's a lot more like difficult to navigate. So I haven't really gone down that path. Not that I wouldn't want to, because I do think there's a lot of pops I've bought that like I have no issue selling off or trading off, but I just haven't yet to sell anything that I've purchased, which is kind of a detriment because like there's some of these that I don't want and I, I do prefer to downsize my collection. I just have yet to go down that rabbit hole because it, for me, it's a little intimidating. Um, I don't know what everyone else feels on that subject. See, I'm not gonna put a protector on this because Rainbow Goofy is out on display. So we'll do this one later. Oh my God. Okay. Also with this freaking Waddles pop, I pre-ordered this and I feel like you're not gonna be able to see it from inside the box. Also, I'm so hot. <laughs> I don't have the AC on because it's so loud. <laughs> and I don't want there to be like, Oh my god, that was a bad angle. I'm trying to get up. I don't want there to be like background noise, you know? But he's missing a freaking ear. Like, okay, you see that? There is no right ear for him. And like, I got it in and was like, do I say something in Hot Topic? Like, is it even worth my time? And I just didn't want to. It was just like, for me, the effort I would put in to like get a replacement just did not seem worth it. And I thought it was kind of funny and unique that he has no ear. So now he has no ear. And he's using a pop protector <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, I was just like, there's no way I'm going to contact Hot Topic for something like that. Not happening. I don't know if people think those errors are cool or not. I don't really know. Comment down below. Do you think that's cool? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I have definitely at least over 100 Funko Pops. Um, I still have a lot more that I want talking about some fun experiences collecting i love getting chases in the wild um i tend to view chases a little bit differently than i think maybe others in the community and that's the great thing about being in a community is not everyone has to think the same you know everyone can have different opinions and it can be a o but my opinion on chases are like i think a chase is meant to be just that a chase like i don't think you're entitled to have every chase now if you want every chase by all means go for it but like for me like if i don't get a chase it's not the end of the world like for example baymax i ordered one just one it's not a chase and i'm not gonna go find the chase like it's not worth it to me i have my one it's cool i also don't like glow chases anyway so like i'm not on the hunt for it but, like, I would no way order, like, four of these and be like, I can't wait till I get a chase. Now, I know that's different with Funko Sodas. I'm a little hypocrite on that. But, like, for Funko Pops, I don't know. I just feel like I'm glad um, Hot Topic did change their policy recently where the, the purchase limit went from, like, five to two. Because people just buy all the commons in hopes, or buy all of the pops in hopes to get a chase. And then they're stuck with all these commons that they sell. And the crazy part is they're still selling those commons above retail. So I'm just like, y'all are, are wild. Um, a sleeping Stitch. I kind of regret this one. I don't really feel like I need it, but whatever. We got it. But yeah, um, fun chase stories of mine. I have the chase glitter, what is it called? Diamond blue Eeyore. And I got that in person because well, another thing is just like following socials you'll my hot topic didn't post about their chases because my hot topic is really lame and doesn't post about chase pops like they'll post when they get new pops in but even if it's a pop that has a chase they won't post about the chase like they're so they're so lame um so you just have to like kind of feel it out but i had just been seeing on socials that like your was restocking at various hot topics so like randomly one morning i went in and i'd like open and there was two chases and i got one of them so that was really cool because if I didn't get that at retail, I wouldn't own it. Just point blank period. I would not pay 80 bucks for it. But now that I do have it, I quite, quite enjoy it. And I think it was actually my first chase in a while. So kind of sentimental. Here's a stitch in one of these pop protectors. And then another fun chase I got in the wild. Ugh. Sorry for my readjustments. Um, actually, I think that might be the only Disney one. I got hand to pull let's just pull him and put a projector on him oh he's already in a protector but i got flocked panda pool he had restocked online and i pre-ordered literally just one we'll do this one next 
and it came in as a chase. Like literally, it was fate. It was meant to be. And if it wasn't meant to be, then I, I wouldn't have it in my collection. So like that's sort of how I feel with Chase Pops. Um, I do have some non-Disney Chases that I found in the wild. Um, I have two TLC ones. Who so is it? Chili and Left Eye. And then I got I got those both at Hot Topic. Although one of the boxes is pretty in pretty bad shape. And then I got Inspector Gadget Chase at GameStop in the wild. Not that I collect those. I actually do quite like the TLC ones, Inspector Gadget ones, whatever. But yeah, I mean, if you, I feel like for anyone, if you see Chase in the Wild, it's sort of like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna buy that. Dino Deadpool. I also love, <laughs> okay, so also another caveat for my Disney animal collecting is that it's not just like Disney animated films. I include that into Marvel animals and Star Wars animals. And one of my favorites as well is the Simpsons animals. Like I have Itchy and Scratchy <laughs> somewhere in this, this wall of pops. Um, Cause now Disney owns Simpsons. I also would love like Santa's Little Helper um, and more Simpsons pops like that. But I love like the like random ones that are like technically Disney and still animals. Like I really want Alligator Loki. Um, but I love the animal Deadpool versions. Like I still want, um, I think it's like a Deadpool duck one. I think that's the only other animal Deadpool one that I want. And then there's Deadpool on a unicorn. So maybe that one too. Here's a Diamond Jiminy. I love this one. I love Diamond Pops. Okay, also more caveats in my collection. I just like talking about it, <laughs> even though that's not easy to see. Another caveat of mine is I don't typically tend to like multiple versions. I just want one version of the character. Now, some of those are exceptions, unfortunately, like Stitch, because they make so many freaking Stitch Pops that unfortunately, somehow, one way or another, I just end up with multiple Stitch Pops in my collection. Um, but that's typically the rule I like to follow. Like, let me see who's a good example of this. Like the, I have a Raya, the Glow Raya from Walmart. I just need the Glow Raya. I don't need the, also the regular Raya. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another example. Usually it's like that, like variants, um, things like that. Um, but there are some popular Disney characters that I tend to just get multiples of because they make so many of them. Typically like, the popular Disney pseudo mascots, like Stitch, Pooh, things like that. Um, but yeah, I don't like to get doubles. And then I like collecting diamond pops, but I kind of envision in my head, like having them set aside from my main collection. So like diamond pops are an exception where like I want a regular and then a diamond pop. Um, that's why I have diamond Jiminy and then the NYCC Jiminy, and I have like Diamond Marie, and then a Flocked Marie, and then I have, that might be it for Diamond, I don't have a lot yet. Well, Diamond Eeyore is also kind of weird, because, I mean, no, that counts, because I do want the Flocked Eeyore. Okay, also, another thing, I love Flocked Pops, and if there is a Flocked Pop and a regular Pop, chances are I want the Flocked Pop in my collection. So if there's a flocked version, I don't even need the regular version, just give me the flocked version. And I'm also at this point where like I speculate on like what's gonna get a flocked pop and try to not get the comment of that, hoping that they will release a flocked. For example, <laughs> um, there's a Pluto from like the Disney Treasures subscription box that they had. And I'm not getting it, I'm not. I'm gonna wait, cause I know one day there will be a flocked Pluto, mark my words. <laughs> and like, I'm not getting it because I know I'm gonna buy the regular Pluto and then one day they're, they're gonna come out with the flocked version and then I'm gonna want that one more and then also be stuck with this regular Pluto and it's gonna be like, now what? You know what I mean? So I try to anticipate like, okay, who do I not need to buy because I think they'll release a flocked version of? Yeah, <laughs> is that a little much? Maybe, but it's just how I collect. Um, Another really good come up of mine that was really good timing was my flocked Remy Chase. That was probably the highest I paid secondhand for a pop, which wasn't not that high. It was like $45. Um, Cause I got it a while ago because I really like Remy. He's like my favorite. I love Ratatouille. I would say like my number one Pixar film is Ratatouille. Controversial yet brave, you decide. Um, but like, I freaking love that film. I love Remy. Ugh, love him. So I had to get the Chase Pop because I also love Flocked. It was just like a dream come true. And now that Pop's gone up in value, it's like $90 maybe. So very, very wise on my end. And also like the highest I'm willing to go usually for like secondhand on Pop. Sorry, I cannot 
can't get this to flap in. I'm like struggling. Um, yeah, I don't like to pay a lot for pops. <laughs> um, if I don't buy retail, I will wait a long time and just hunt for a good price. Um, which is also kind of something I wanted to speak on after collecting for a year is like people see this when they come into my home because my front door is like literally behind me or in front of me, but behind the camera. So behind y'all, but in front of me. And they're like, wow, you have so many Funko Pops. Like how much did it all cost? Like how much are these? And I'm like, retail, like $12. Some of them I use box lunch money and hot cash on. So like even less. And I'm like all y'all, I'm like on the hot topic, exclusive, whatever. I'm a box lunch little to whatever. So I get a dollar box lunch shipping. I get $2 hot topic shipping. It's at this point where I even signed up for the freaking GameStop Pro, whatever the you know, whatever that is, even though I don't really buy games, I got it purely for Funko Pops, <laughs> just like whatever. Um, so I can save five dollars in the store to have cheaper, you know, collect in the cheaper fashion. And people think like, oh my god, you spend so much money on this hobby. And like, yeah, that is true, but not as much as people think because like, I'm a very savvy shopper. I don't like to buy past retail. Like for conventions, if I don't get something at retail, I usually don't get it. That's not happening because I'm not playing that game. Y'all can play that game. I'm not playing that game. <laughs> um, another good example of like a good purchase decision of mine was the Roger Rabbit Soda Chase. I also collect Funko Sodas. I think I just have a regular Roger Rabbit can somewhere. The Chase for this. Oh my God, ugh. Y'all, this was a nightmare. So, story time. This will be my last story time, and then we'll cut, we'll cut the video because I'm I'm here now in like 26 minutes. <laughs> Woo! Um, but I really wanted to film a video like this because I feel like I have so many stories that I just want to share and be candid and talk to the community because like I like collecting Funko Pops, but like it's really hard for me to participate in the community because I don't like taking photos, I don't like posting on Instagram. <laughs> so, how else do you really interact? Um, so I was like, you know what? Do it my way. I'll just make a long stream of consciousness, Trisha Paytas style video for the Funko community. Um, but my last story before I bid adieu is, oh yeah, it's not even Funko Pop related. It's Funko Soda related. Whew. Part of also why I've steered away from chases here's olivia i don't even know if I, I don't even know if i've been showing you i just did basil olivia's kind of boring let's pull out some fun ones as we go <laughs> oh no they're all kind of boring um we'll do donald he's up here i don't want to hit cinderella's head though okay sorry i know y'all like get to the story come on okay so i am collecting also funko sodas only the Disney ones and like only like Disney animated characters. So for example, like not the Rocketeer. I'm not doing Marvel or Star Wars. Um, just like Disney animated characters, whether it's a short story uh, or like a full feature film, whatever. Anyways, so I needed Roger Rabbit. And I initially bought two, no, three from the Funko shop. Got all three in all comments. Then, you know, I already should, like, just end it there. That's enough. Like, retail, that's, like, $36 plus shipping. Maybe $40. Okay, $40 on the can. Let's just end it, you know? Cut, count your losses, whatever. No. Then I decided to get two more from Hot Topic because I see that they, you know, Hot Topic stocked some. So I got two from Hot Topic. Both commons. So now I've spent, I am now. A lot of money for five sodas for all of them to be common which is just like the worst odds freaking possible and so i just i was like that's it i'm done i'm not buying any more of these sodas i'm just gonna buy the chase so i bought the chase on mercari i got it for like 45 dollars maybe plus shipping it's like 50 dollars shipped which is a lot like that like i said like that's as much as i like to pay for like funko collectibles secondhand and i think like that plus the remy chase is the most i paid in my whole year of collecting secondhand, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, but yeah, so I, that's what I did. I bit the bullet and had to buy the chase secondhand. 
and it's been it's been worth it because that chase also kind of went up in value it's like now like 80 to 90 i want to say which i would definitely not have purchased it at that price and then been sad that i would basically never own it um because yeah so yeah and all in all i love collecting i love funko i've <laughs> clearly <laughs> drank the kool-aid and i'm like deep 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 in it um but it's a lot of fun i'm gonna like end the video here and just like in my free time just keep putting these protectors on because i really need to do it but like this video is already at 30 minutes and yeah i think that's about enough um of my thoughts for the day but thank you all for sticking around um maybe right now i'll roll like no the collection's a mess i was gonna like roll a clip of like my shelf space and like go more in depth to all of my pops but like somewhere on the floor i'm trying to put protectors on them i don't want to like do all that so that's the end <laughs> but if you stayed through all of this thank you that's that's impressive because i talk a lot and i have a lot of thoughts to share but yeah i want to keep making more videos and putting things out there because why not contribute to the community and provide my opinion on the internet like everyone else <laughs> well okay um anyways thank you um tomorrow is the fun con drop i'm gonna go for some of the pops and see what i get i already got cap wolf tonight on amazon but i'm gonna go for white rabbit black light if it's still in stock we will see um walrus and buddy and cronk with the scroll scout like the scroll scout cronk um but yeah if you're going for FunCon tomorrow, good luck with the drop. If not, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!